You've seen how SOLIDWORKS desktop is even better in 2021. Now let's look at 2021X, 3D Experience Works FDO2 specifically. The following three stories are 20 minute tastes of how we've expanded your capabilities with the broader Works portfolio. This might be some of your first dives into the 3D Experience platform. Storing, managing, and collaborating on design data is a challenge every company faces. Now, with many more teams working remotely, there are questions on everyone's mind. How can we securely centralize our data, improve collaboration, and design concurrently while maintaining our design tool of choice SOLIDWORKS? These were the challenges Square Robot sought to address when they adopted cloud management with SOLIDWORKS and Inovia. Let's follow a small team to see what it looks like to store and manage SOLIDWORKS desktop data in the cloud. You shouldn't connect your SOLIDWORKS to just anything. So let's see what it's like to connect it to Anovia. We'll begin by dropping in on Eric the engineer as he starts his day working in the SOLIDWORKS desktop. He receives a notification from his manager, Megan. Clicking the pop-up opens up his 3D Swim app where he can see that there is a discussion thread involving a new design request. He's being asked to add rollers to an existing assembly. He initiates a search for the related CAD models and just drags them right into his SOLIDWORKS session. It's that easy to get access to his SOLIDWORKS data that's securely stored inside the 3D Experience platform. He reserves the assembly to give himself right access. Now, he's made design changes, but before saving back to the cloud, he wants to know where his assembly is being used. The Relations app gives him a graphical view of all the parent-child dependencies for his SOLIDWORKS model. He finds the top-level assembly, and he's able to open that right up in his session. And he sees the familiar options to open the model resolved, lightweight, or enlarged design review mode. Choosing lightweight means that SOLIDWORKS doesn't have to download every part contained in the assembly. That's a big time saver for the large models that Eric are, is used to working with. With the top level assembly up to date, he reserves it and he clicks save. Now, when he goes to save, Eric is gonna create a new revision of the lid now that the rollers have been added. Despite this being a pretty large assembly, save time is efficient because only the models that have changed need to be saved to the cloud. That was easy. In fact, his team was productive from day one because connecting their data to the cloud required no customization or special setup. Later on, Eric still has some work to do, but it doesn't require modeling inside of SOLIDWORKS. All his 3D experience apps are accessible from any browser and with his data safely in the cloud, he has the freedom and mobility to keep working from just about anywhere on any device. So he's gonna go ahead and navigate through his model using the cloud software. He loads the top assembly into the product explorer, and this app provides a graphical view and a list view at the same time. So jumping over into his specialized tab, his customized viewport, he can arrange and filter the display any way he likes. He needs to locate the newly added roller assembly within the structure in order to attach a supporting document. In this case, it's a PDF with installation instructions. All right, once that's done, now it's time to give Megan an update on his progress. Instead of an email or phone call or web meeting, Eric tailors an interactive dashboard that will have exactly the information that she wants to review. First, he's gonna go ahead and add a 3D play viewing app with a preloaded top assembly in it. That way there's no question about which components or which parts that he wants Megan to see. He also grabs a screenshot so he can post it back over into the discussion thread and to keep that team collaboration and communication going. After he has that set up, he's going to go ahead and launch the Bookmarks app, which is a convenient way of organizing shortcuts to frequently used or favorite items. His manager, Megan, likes this because it keeps her most important data right at her fingertips. So when he's ready to share the dashboard, he can go ahead and just go ahead and copy that link. All right, now as a last step, Eric's going to go ahead 
and open up his 3D Swim app in a side panel. And he's going to go ahead and add a comment and include a paste to the link to the shared dashboard, providing an update to everyone who's part of that conversation. He also inserts a screenshot of the latest design directly from the browser. Connecting SolidWorks to the 3D Experience platform is the best of both worlds. Benefits of cloud while using your desktop software. It provides the fastest and easiest way to store, manage, and share data with the convenience and security of the cloud. There's little to no setup required, so users can be productive right away. The 3D Experience platform is much more than just saving SolidWorks to the cloud. For non-CAD users like Megan, the engineering manager, the platform gives her a simple, browser-based approach to managing her team more efficiently. Let's see how she uses the 3D Experience platform apps to streamline collaboration. Megan opens her browser and sees that Eric has replied to her post. He's included a link that she can add to her existing dashboard. The 3D Play viewing app and bookmarks are preloaded with the data Megan needs to review the latest design. Fully interactive viewing of even large 3D models is a breeze on any device, especially with touchscreens. There's no hardware required, no CAD licenses needed. Megan's going to go ahead and use the measure tool to verify the proper radius on the roller wall assembly. Oops, wrong units. You can just switch that over. No problem there. The 25 inch radius is confirmed, but looking closer at the roller arms, she wonders if they might be excessive twisting without some kind of support member between them. She launches the Issue 3D app to log a record of the issue. It's just one of the many ways the team could use Inovia to track problems and report change requests. She's going to go ahead and tag the related models. In this case, identifying which assembly level she wants to include within the part. Uh, and in this case, Eric's going to automatically be notified through the platform. There's no need for following up with an email or phone call. It's such a more streamlined process and way to collaborate. Now she's going to go ahead and mar launch 3D Markup. This app gives her extended tools and documents that she needs to report the issue. She can create multiple views and add various annotations right on the 3D model. The markup and all the other relevant information is self-contained within the issue and available to all stakeholders. While Eric gets to work on the design issue, Megan has a job for Debbie Designer. She uses the Collaborative Tasks app to assign Debbie with adding a hardware kit and creating a drawing for the wheel roller assembly. Just like with the issue app, Collaborative Tasks collect all the communications, assignees, and 3D model data in one spot and it displays the progress of all her tasks in a single dashboard tab, giving Megan an overview of everything on her radar. So the 3D Experience platform helps Megan to streamline collaboration with her team, all from a browser on any device with no software to install. The intuitive apps eliminate dozens of other disconnected solutions, improving productivity and providing clear focus for her team members. The customer needs a quick response, so Megan's design team will need to work on the same SOLIDWORKS model at the same time. Not having the proper right access, accidentally overriding someone else's work, these things happen all the time with traditional file-based data management, and it's even harder when workers are remote. Let's see how the 3D Experience platform enables a more seamless, error-free approach to concurrent design, starting with Debbie. She has a collaborative task app running inside of her SOLIDWORKS task pane. She sees the task that has been assigned to her and drags it over to the in-progress state. The related CAD model is already attached, so she just needs to open it into her session. All of Debbie's changes occur at the assembly level, so she really only needs to reserve the top level for write access. She's going to go ahead, get to work, and once she's added the fastener kit, She's going to go ahead and save it up to the cloud so that any other user will be able to access her updates. After that's uploaded to the cloud, she's also going to create a 2D drawing with the material that Megan is going to end up showing the customer. So again, this is the standard SOLIDWORKS approach to uh, product design and creating the drawings based off of your models, all with access to the cloud. 
Meanwhile, Eric gets to work on the stability problem. The issue management app keeps track of his progress and carries along all the information he needs to get to work. He starts by going ahead and opening up that 3D markup. He sees that after he opens up the 3D markup, Megan's notes and clicks are all documented on the 3D geometry where he can easily identify the affected subassembly. Also note, Megan attached the roller assembly, but Eric identifies that the reference is the parent assembly itself. And so that's the part he's gonna wanna go ahead and update. He locates this through the relations app and attaches it to the issue so that everyone can find it in one location. From here, he can open it directly inside of his SolidWorks session. But this is where things get interesting because this is the same assembly Debbie is already working on. That's okay. Eric only needs right access to the roller wheel assembly itself. The top assembly is just for visual reference. He reserves what he needs and gets to work adding the stabilizing member. Now, when he tries to save the assembly, he sees there are red components that also need to be saved that he didn't reserve. On the fly, the software gives right access to those additional files without causing any interruption to Eric's workflow. So by reserving the modified data, he can update any model that no one else is using. The save is complete, and now the assembly is up to date and, and safely uploaded to the cloud, problem solved. Once the problem's done, Eric can go ahead and communicate that with the team by moving the issue status to in approval for Megan to review. Thus, triggering a notification for Megan to take a look at his work. Since Debbie is still working in the assembly, Eric also needs to let her know that he's finished making changes. And he's gonna do this by using the built-in conversation tool to go ahead and send Debbie a message that there are files that she should update. This is a great way to make sure that your team isn't working on top of each other or overriding redundant work. So what does Debbie do? Debbie just needs to refresh that assembly to get the latest version from the server, and she's up to date, including the drawing, which is now ready to be saved as well. To close the loop, she returns to her collaborative tasks from inside of the SolidWorks task pane and attaches the drawing. She'll also go in and leave a comment to notify Megan that the task has been completed and go ahead and move that task over into the completed column, all without ever leaving her SolidWorks design session. So this is a directly integrated way to work with your team from inside of SolidWorks. But now back to Megan who doesn't use SolidWorks. One way she keeps up to date with her team is through her notification panel. Anytime there's a status change, an update, or a comment on anything she's involved with, it shows up here. First, she checks on the issue she assigned Eric. Her original 3D markup automatically shows the latest design changes. Everything looks good, so she's gonna go ahead and mark that issue as completed. Issue management on the 3D experience platform turns out to be a great way for Megan's company to log the history of the problem reports and change requests, a must for their highly regulated industry. Now, to take a look at Debbie's work, Megan switches to her bookmarks app there's the drawing, she drags it into the 3D play viewer, which is exactly what she needs to show the concept to the customer. She marks the drawing as released, so it can uh, no longer be changed while it's being approved by the customer. Megan posts a quick comment on her original discussion thread to congratulate the team on finishing the stage of the project. Multiple designers accessing the same file simultaneously, we all know how tricky that can be with traditional file-based storage. But with SolidWorks plus Anovia, concurrent design is easy because the PLM tools are ready to use out of the box. Users can tell right away who's working on what, and they can avoid problem, uh, common problems like permissions issues, version mismatches, and accidental overwrites. And when there are changes, the various notification tools built into the 3D experience platform keeps everyone in the loop. Now more than ever, companies are looking for a way to centralize and secure their SolidWorks desktop data in the cloud while streamlining collaboration and enabling error-free concurrent design. For Square Robot, 
SolidWorks, and Inovia made this a reality. Being a startup, you have to move fast. What was important to us was being able to remain collaborative because that's how we keep the speed up. With SolidWorks, we have a cloud-based PLM solution that allows models to be shared over great distances and be synchronized instantly. This is from the co-founder of Square Robot. Now that we've talked about designing a part, let's talk about simulation. In the story of next level validation, you'll see how we've expanded your simulation-driven design capabilities and leveraged the best of both worlds, industry-leading design tools from SolidWorks, integrating with industry-leading analysis tools from Simulia using best-in-class Abacus FEA technology. Discovering product performance issues early in a design phase not only increases your bottom line as a company by avoiding costly rework, but empowers you as a designer, engineer, or analyst to make a better product. Figuring out the best design takes multiple iterations, and the ability to rapidly test various scenarios helps you and your team make more informed decisions faster. Solving design challenges is one thing, manufacturing the product is another, and being able to validate how your product is manufactured increases the value of your validation efforts. Let's follow a designer and a structural ana analyst to see how they collaborate and solve these various scenarios with the BioDAP Modoni. Adam's simulation result can be viewed from the web. A web browser with Debbie confirms the lower bracket definitely needs to be redesigned based on Adam's findings. The simulation result tells Debbie where the changes need to be made, and she starts to design a new revision of the bracket. So in this case, she's able to analyze the information all within the web browser to see exactly what the redesign needs to be. Proud of her work, she thinks her new design will be strong enough, but before she sends it to Adam, she wants to validate it herself. The simulation app in her structured designer role can guide her through all of the steps of validation and strengthen her new design. So going directly from SolidWorks into the design validation for the structural designer role, you have the ability to basically follow an assistant and streamline your loads and fixturing process. And finally, run the analysis and review the results, making it a much more streamlined process to get your answers. And now that we're feeling more confident in the new design, Demi updates the Moto Knee assembly as a new revision. Both Adam and Debbie are working from the same dashboard, so Adam can see the new simulation and review it. Adam will also move forward with validating the new assembly. Since both the design and simulation data are stored and connected on the 3D Experience platform, Adam is able to easily create a new revision of the simulation he created earlier. After opening the new revision, he simply replaces the old model with the new one reflecting Debbie's changes. So from there, he just needs to modify any fixtures and loads and connectors that associate with the new geometry and resolve the analysis. And just like Debbie, Adam also uses the assistant to make sure he doesn't miss anything before he runs the study. Better to be safe than sorry. Now, with the results complete, Adam's going to go ahead and compare the two study. He confirms that the new Moto Knee lower bracket is now strong enough and no longer suffers from the excessive displacement of the earlier design, meaning a complete success in the redesign and saving some disaster in the design process. So the assistant helps both designers and analysts run faster studies and evolve their designs quickly based on valuable simulation results. And creating and managing design validation information on the 3D Experience platform keeps you and your data connected so your team can stay productive. Adam was able to validate the strength of the new bracket, but how will this affect the rest of the assembly? Due to the harsh conditions of action sports, the Moto Knee is often subjected to harmonic and random vibration loading. Furthermore, BioDapt Creator Moto Knee to be adaptable to many different extreme environments, so there are multiple different configurations of the design. Each is customized for both the feel for the wear and based around the sport they're competing in. So anytime a change is made, every configuration needs to be validated for each extreme loading condition. Similar to the creation of a linear structural validation, Adam is able to create a frequency scenario with the apps provided in his structural performance engineer role. 
Once again, we're going to see that he uses the assistant to complete all the necessary steps. After solving, Adam is relieved that most of the natural frequency of this configurations of the Modoni are outside of the expected operating region, meaning that we don't have to worry too much. But to better understand the remaining vibration concerns, Adam creates a random vibration scenario using the structural mechanics engineer role. This role expands the types of physics that can be addressed and the types of studies that can be solved. Conveniently, the new scenarios are stored in the same simulation project as the previous results, and you can see that the performance of the configuration is acceptable. Now that he has both the natural frequency and random vibration studies completed for one configuration, he can easily repurpose the study and solve additional Modo knee configurations at another time. For now, he moves on to the next task of validation. Adam now needs to understand how the different configurations of the Modo knee will perform under different dynamic loading environments. Swapping out the guide plate of the Modo knee will change the response of the knee under loading. So Adam creates a new explicit dynamic study that includes a prescribed rotation and it's going to go ahead and add sensors to calculate the required torque to achieve the rotation. Adam also needs to understand the force feedback felt by the wearer to ensure comfort and performance. After solving one iteration, Adam makes a quick change to the plates in SOLIDWORKS and updates the model to his study. Only the changed parts need to be remeshed, which is done automatically by a simple update. Furthermore, Adam continues real-world testing and modifies the spring and damper properties of the shock. The Moto Knee is designed to be configured quickly by each user, and going through this battery of studies ensures that the wearer of the Moto Knee will be able to adapt their prosthetic on the fly for maximum performance and flexibility. So the structural performance engineer and structural mechanics engineering roles on the 3D Experience platform enabled Adam to validate various configurations, use cases, and loading environments on the Modo Knee to better understand and communicate its performance in the real world. Without the cost of manufacturing or testing a single prototype, Biodapt has already evolved this design fast, ensuring that physical testing will be a quick and painless step in the engineering design process. Now, based on his calculations, Adam determined that a deep drawn steel foot cover would be the least expensive manufacturing method to create a strong cover that will protect the valuable components in the biotapped VF2 foot. Deep drawn meta, uh, manufacturing has a lot of variables and retooling a punch or a die can be very expensive. So Adam wants to make sure that everything is done right the first time. By using conversations in 3D Swim, Adam asks Debbie, to make him a model for the deep drawn analysis. She's already on top of it and tells him where to find the model. Just another way that collaboration is the center of the 3D experience platform. So now that we have a model from his simulation app, Adam's going to be able to open the model right away and create a new study. His goal is to discover how close the resultant metal shape will be to the original design figure out how much thinning will occur in the material, and determine the minimum blank size to achieve the design shape. Adam makes quick work of setting up properties and boundary conditions to simulate the manufacturing operation. Since he's using the explicit dynamic solver, the complex contacts and material behavior is solved quickly. Adam discovers that the thickness variation across the deformed shape is nominal, so now he moves on to optimizing the size of the blank. To optimize the amount of material used for each foot cover produced, Adam makes another request to Debbie to make the modifications to the component. So using that simulation to take the information back into the design cycle. Back in X-Design, Debbie uses the 3D creator role to make the appropriate modifications. Back in his simulation app, Adam updates the model and reruns the study the results show that he, he's determined the best stock size for the manufacturing operation. The 3D Experience platform not only delivers powerful technology for advanced simulations, it enables coworkers to thrive in a highly collaborative environment. 
Simulia makes simulation-driven design more powerful than ever with assisted workflows and sophisticated virtual prototyping capabilities traditionally reserved for specialists. So you can produce project, uh, projects with low risk and increase the chance of launch success. From Bioadapt, we can check clearances and ranges of motion. We can simulate that, model around range of travel, and run strength analysis to be as lightweight and as strong as possible. And that's from Mike Schultz, the president of Biodapt. All right, let's move on to our final case study. As a designer, you've always required the most powerful and most expensive workstations on the market. But with more of the workforce working remotely than ever before, you need a more flexible environment. With the 3D Experience platform, you can design on the cloud with any device without sacrificing the performance and power required for you to stay productive no matter where you are. In this demonstration, you're going to see an entire design process on multiple components of the circular saw from concept to manufacturing within the browser. We'll start with the industrial design. Dan's our industrial designer in charge of the ergonomics and aesthetics, while Don's a mechanical engineer who will prepare the model for manufacturing. Let's drop in on Dan as he shapes a grip handle with 3D Sculptor. 3D Sculptor is a sub-D modeling application within the 3D Experience platform and it's pretty easy to use. Getting started, he simply picks a cylinder and drops it directly onto the origin. Since flat faces will be incorporated into this design, he can get a head start by checking the crease edges option when he places the initial shape, which will go ahead and add the definition he's looking for. Now with 3D Sculptor, Dan can freely push and pull the model into any shape imaginable, but most of the time, designs are required to fit within a specific boundary. Scale by distance applies a parametrically driven bounding box where he enters a series of dimensions and the shape snaps precisely to the correct size. Also, using the Control A keyboard shortcut, all of the vertices are selected at once. This makes translating an entire shape to a new position a breeze. To maintain a uniform aspect ratio while scaling the side face, Dan can hold the Alt key while dragging any of the scaling dots on the robot manipulator. This shortcut will generally scale in all three dimensions, but since the face was planar, it conveniently maintains its flatness. Also, opening the door to many creative workflows, multiple sets of features can now be created with a single physical product. In this case, Dan would like to propose various concepts of this grip by creating a new feature set for each of his concepts. He can simply copy and paste the features from one set into another. Each feature set can have unique color properties and display states. And by double clicking the copied subdivision feature, Dan gets started on the first concept of the grip while leaving the original start shape intact. So by using the alt drag scaling technique, Dan can wrap up this concept in no time. As views change, the area of focus stays centered on the screen. This allows Dan to check his edits from multiple angles without having to continually wrestle with the zoom and pan functionality. All right, we can then use the sub D modeling techniques to push and pull our shape into the correct size. And finally, if we wanna collect some feedback from the rest of the team, Dan here is going to post the entire 3D model to a community directly from inside the design app. This streamlines the communication process and allows his team to arrive at the perfect design faster than ever. With the ability to create subdivision models directly in a browser on any device, complex shapes have never been easier to create. Now, let's go ahead and move on to the mechanical design. After starting the design in 3D Sculptor to create the ergonomic grip handle, it's now been turned over to Don, the mechanical designer, to complete the design and prepare for the manufacturing within 3D Creator. Don will need to create the stem connecting the body of the circular saw to the grip handle. So to start, the approach Don's going to take is by creating a mounting flange with very little effort here. By pre-selecting a face in context of the assembly, he can skip the sketch and extrude his first feature. Sketched ellipses 
include construction lines, making them extremely easy to orient. So in this example, Don can snap the quadrants of the ellipse to the midpoints of the external model edges. Or he can also click on both the points and the edges, opting to create the same relationship in the pop-up menu. These relations will fully define the sketch. While extruding the feature, the preview is displayed to easily confirm the correct end conditions are being applied. But on second thought, Don is underwhelmed with the resulting shape and would prefer to a sleeker look. To accomplish this, he can roll the design back before the extrude feature and create a curved path. So starting with two point splines, he can activate the spline handles to achieve full control over the curvature. Relationships can be applied to both ends of the spline and the handles can be adjusted until they look just right. Don rolls the model forward to edit the original extrude feature not only can an extrude feature be changed to an extrude cut, it can even be transformed into a revolve or, in this case, a sweep. It's called a super feature, and it provides an unprecedented amount of flexibility for all references. Alright, next up, since the part is going to be injection molded, it's important to specify a parting line. By activating parting line, the option for draft analysis tool, Don can pinpoint the exact locations. After adding a few more features, Don has split the body into two halves to make these bodies easier to work with. They can be divided into separate sets of features. This way, each set of feature will be independent from each other. By hiding the other feature sets, Don can focus on the lower half of the design. To lighten the design and prepare it for molding, Don adds a 2mm shell feature to reinforce the hollow design. He can also sketch in a profile for a rib. Even without perfect Perfectly trimming and extending the sketch entities, the rib feature will project the geometry to fill the internal volume of the component if necessary. You can also add draft based on the neutral plane if you'd like. So having the right tools allows you to get to market faster at a reduced cost. For example, the milled angle bracket and base plate of the circular saw are not only expensive to manufacture, but require additional assembly steps. Don recognizes this, and he decides to use 3D Sheet Metal Creator to consolidate these two components into one. On the 3D Experience platform, all applications are compatible with each other. So when Don dives into X Sheet Metal, there's the ability to seamlessly switch between X Design and Sheet Metal. The toolbar in Don's users interface updates so he can stay focused on the task at hand. Don will start by isolating the components he plans to replace and creating new replacement parts, something that you would typically do with inside of sheet metal. Copying the put footprint from the original base will give Don a head start on the redesign. These holes are no longer necessary, so they can be removed. Sheet Metal Creator includes advanced context recognition, which means he'll have quick access to the tools he wants while keeping his cursor focused on the model. This is similar to the quick access toolbar inside of SolidWorks. While getting started, he's conveniently prompted to provide some overall sheet metal parameters to be used as default values, saving time on downstream features. Don hides the original base and he's ready to move forward with his design. For the first feature, to enhance the design, he can bend the front edge upward so the base plate can smoothly glide over the workpiece. The position of this bend is precisely defined by a sketch and can be set to any angle. Now, all sheet metal features require a sketch, or they don't. In this case, Don selects the outer edge of the base to add some short walls. There are multiple alignment options to perfectly position the added material, such as measurement criteria and material side, to confirm that the corners were trimmed per the default parameters, the current design can be flattened at any time. The new cost-effective design requires a flange that mimics the angle bracket. Using the intelligent context-sensitive menu, Don's going to be able to create a rough clearance cut for it. So rather than having to switch between multiple tools, he can simply make his edits within the X app environment. 
Once again, he's going to go in and convert the profile from the previous design to make some small adjustments. To strengthen the connection to the base plate, he'll remove these entities and close the gap by merging the endpoints. Even though his sketch was created out of plane, it can still be used to create a wall on edge feature. These are examples of sheet metal tools that add flexibility to your design, especially in a design environment where you can take into consideration other pieces and flanges on the fly. The default tangent relief, which was set earlier, may not apply here, but Don can override it on the fly for this unique instance. Finally, he'll want to adjust the material side to ensure the flange doesn't interfere with other components. To account for manufacturability, Don can check for overlapping geometry in the flat pattern with an overlap detected. He can then measure the edge and assess how big of an adjustment needs to be made. So you're able to double check your design for manufacturability on the fly. And when you find something wrong, the key is you can fix it within that same environment. So you're not switching back and forth in order to, you know, change which tool you're using as much as you're able to adaptively update your model and designs within the cloud. So X Sheet Metal does the math and reduces the risk of entering any wrong values here. The sharp edges could be dangerous to the end user and it could increase the difficulty to cut. So Don uses the corner tool to gather the edges and round them off. Another way that Don can improve the design is by adding a guide rail. This will require a pair of clearance cuts through the sidewall. Don, st uh, Don starts with a rectangular sketch offset from the end face of the guide rail. By deselecting the link to thickness option on the cutout tool, the cut can extend through the entire model. Of course, all cut faces will be created normal to each surface to allow for convenient laser, plasma, or water jet cutting. A slot needs to be created to hold the guide rail in place. In manufacturing, a feature like this would be stamped with a forming tool, and it can be modeled using the exact same technique. First, you'll have to find the tool using the 3D Experience platform's powerful search capabilities. Then, he can define its location on the model with a sketch point. And then finally, the, user's, uh, the user stamp feature allows him to specify the direction, fillet, parameter, and which faces to remove from the resulting geometry. Could give this new sheet metal component a realistic look, Don searches the extensive material database for galvanized steel appearance and applies it to the part. These materials are perfect for making design reviews more engaging and also supporting downstream workflows such as product renderings. Don will supply his design to the cutting machine using the industry standard DXF format. This will include a cutting profile, bend lines, and user stamps. Saving it to his 3D drive allows him to share the file with anyone so they can view it and add markups using the 3D Play app we saw earlier. Additionally, these markups can be shared to the community to notify key project stakeholders and discuss further changes. Before closing his browser for the day, Don notices another component that will require a flat pattern before it can be manufactured. Unfortunately, this component was created using traditional modeling features like extrudes and cuts. Still, Don's able to get the information he needs using the recognized tool to calculate an accurate flat pattern. Just another example of how adaptable these tools are on the fly on the cloud. When you use the right tool, you can get your job done faster at a higher quality. The 3D sheet metal creator role on the 3D experience platform provides a purpose-built environment that will have your designs ready for manufacturing in no time. Now, a team of design engineers have been busy evolving the aesthetic of the circular saw, along with finding ways to reduce manufacturing costs through creative sheet metal design. But before it can go into manufacturing, material finish and color selections have to be decided on. Let's see how you can help accelerate the decision process and get this product to market with the powerful cloud rendering capabilities of the 3D experience. Dan is working in the 3D render role in order to kick off some product color proposals. Creating a new rendering project, he has instant access to all the current design data through the 3D experience. Being new to this role, Dan immediately notices the lean user interface, which makes it easy to start creating some photorealistic renderings right away. 
no clutter. A handful of components in the circular saw already have appearances that were applied during the design phase. Since these are retained in the rendering product, Dan can drive right into making a color modification. Creating a new scene, let's Dan modify the appearances while maintaining the original changing, only the red to blue for the housing, and a light gray on the blade guard itself. At any point, Dan can enable the rendering preview to check in on his progress. This is a perfect way to verify materials and color selections are just right before moving to the final render. Simple camera settings can also be modified on the fly. Dan decides that a 35mm wide angle lens and a modern 16 to 9 aspect ratio looks the best. Alright, so now it's time to render the project. Simple output options let Dan adjust his images to a standard HD resolution in high quality settings. The necessary credits that will be consumed for the rendering job are calculated and displayed ahead of time. These credits provide a scalable option that are calculated based on the project's needs. With a click of the mouse, the 3D Experience platform takes over by rendering the images right on the cloud. Returning back to the original variations, Dan will generate another rendering which can be done while the first image is being processed. This time, an interactive turntable will be used to extend a virtual walk around to the rest of the team. The job is submitted and run side by side with his earlier request. 3D Render allows endless rendering processes to be done in parallel, never slowing Dan down from tackling his new tasks. After only a few minutes, each rendering is complete and now ready to be shared. Dan has the option to download these locally, save to the 3D Experience platform, or directly post to the team's collaborative swim community where everyone can view, comment, and finalize their decision. Now that the color has been decided on, Dan's next task is to generate out some uh, marketing assets. So 3D Render supports complex materials as well. These physical base representations of the saw blade will add the extra detail for the final outputs. A quick search, drag and drop, and the custom material is applied. A glimpse of the preview window and Dan gets instant feedback of his material selection. Other 3D design assets can be repurposed and added into a 3D rendered project. Searching the team, design library shows a woodworking table. Dan drags this in and positions both the table and the saw for the final output. Applying an ambience to the background adds a nice final touch, just a few tweaks to the background size, exposure, and adjusting the camera perspective to get the perfect shot. Dan is once again ready to send another project to the cloud using 4K resolution with ultra high quality rendering options. This image will be approved for publication in no time. Whether you're creating quick wet renderings for internal design reviews or ge generating professional level marketing assets, 3D Render on the 3D Experience platform provides an easy, affordable, and scalable option for all users on any device. SolidWorks cloud design apps introduce new capabilities with every release that provides more mobility without sacrificing the powerful design tools that you know and love. Subdivisional modeling captures your best creativity as you craft organic and ergonomic shapes, saving hours on design time. And familiar tools that every mechanical and sheet metal designer are familiar with allow you to feel right at home. Cloud-based rendering helps bring you to uh, your work to life without having to worry about hardware constraints. All of this functionality extends to you to design on your own time and work however you please. Check out the 3D Experience exploration page here and follow the link. And you can also get a seven day trial of the platform. So in the second act of the works, what's new, you saw in-depth demos of the 3D experience and how it extends to your SolidWorks portfolio. It's really exciting technology. Using Anovia for cloud-based collaboration, Simulia for high-end physics simulation, SolidWorks for cloud-based X apps, what do you want to explore next? In the preceding program, you saw the power of SolidWorks R&D multiplied by the immense talent across a broader Dassault Systems R&D team. SolidWorks is the heart of the 3D Experience Works portfolio and 3D Experience is your entry to the Dassault Systems cloud-based platform. Each of these tools are designed for you to streamline collaboration, data management, simulation, design, and even extend into the future domains of manufacturing, governance, sales, and marketing. 
you'll see more about 3D Experience works coming soon. In the meantime, enjoy SolidWorks 21 and hang out for the end of our programming.